Hello everyone. After I posted my previous arc vault video, I finished transferring the remaining circuits from the transfer switch panel to the critical loads panel. The circuits this video is about are for the kitchen and dining room. I had some actual real nuisance trips on these circuits, which were very frustrating to deal with. That's the uh, kitchen and dining room. We need to know that the NEC requires a minimum of two 20 amp circuits to serve the kitchen and dining room. So one three conductor 12 gauge cable was used to serve as the required kitchen and dining room circuits. The red and the black conductor in a multi-wire branch circuit each land on one pole of a two pole circuit breaker. So there are two 20 amp circuits in this case, but they share a common neutral conductor. Just as I described in the previous conductor sizing video, the neutral conductor only carries the unbalanced load. So this is a Siemens panel, and Siemens makes double pole breakers like this that are tied together at the handles with a tie bar that can be used on multi-wire branch circuits like this. When one of these circuits trips, because they're tied together, both externally here at this tie bar and internally they're tied together. When one trips, they both trip. You can't use single breakers like these on a multi-conductor branch circuit. That's a code violation. You have to have it like this, where if one trips, they both trip. Since I did use a double circuit breaker like this on the two kitchen circuits, it's actually a multi-wire branch circuit, everything should have been fine. But we had the microwave plugged into this circuit, and five out of ten times when we used the microwave, the AFCI breaker, the double pole breaker, tripped. So I got into troubleshooting these AFCI nuisance trips, much like I did in the previous AFCI video. I went through and corrected any backstabbed receptacles I found, but that didn't make a difference. Then I experimented with using a single pole AFCI circuit breaker on just the half of the circuit the microwave oven is on. And that seemed to make a real difference. So I got a little radical and turned that three conductor circuit into a two conductor circuit and I pulled in an entire new two conductor circuit just for the microwave. So then we had two individual 20 amp circuits serving the kitchen. Then I even took it a step further and split the dining room off of the kitchen circuits and installed a new 20 amp circuit dedicated to just the dining room. At first my brand new microwave circuit seemed to be working great. I ran it at least eight times for two or three minutes each time and it didn't trip at all. But that night at dinner prep time we were microwaving some leftovers and the new AFCI single pole breaker tripped out multiple times. So I watched a few videos and I searched some online forums. Then I found a video by Energy One Electric that provided the answer. Energy One Electric is a working electrician in Canada who always uses Siemens panels. His experience with Siemens AFCI circuit breakers is that they're prone to nuisance tripping on microwaves and laundry circuits. He presented his solution for the problem which he installs by default on every new electrical installation. So that's what I did.
So I ended up installing a GFCI circuit breaker on the microwave circuit. That's just GFCI, not AFCI. And just outside the panel here, when it comes to the first outlet, I installed a blank-faced AFCI receptacle. These are called a blank-faced receptacle because they look and fit like a receptacle, but there's no holes or slots in them to plug something into. It's a blank face. But they have the test and reset button you would expect on like a GFCI or AFCI receptacle. In this case, they're just a blank face receptacle. This 20 amp blank face receptacle protects the entire downstream circuit from arc faults. So the microwave circuit has both GFCI and AFCI protection. And the good news is, this circuit hasn't tripped at all since I installed this. So here's a shout out to Energy One Electric for helping me and all the others who might have benefited from your sharing of your experience-based knowledge. Thank you. It was a great help. And guys, it really is all about experience. Thank you for watching. This is a brand new 20 amp circuit with just one receptacle on it. And you can tell it's a 20 amp receptacle because it has that little tipped over T there. That little T shape. This is an original 15 amp receptacle that was here. It's on a 20 amp circuit, but that's a 15 amp set, uh, receptacle. When you have a dedicated 20 amp circuit for a microwave like this could be, or it could be for an air fryer, something like that, that draws a lot of current. Um, our microwave, I measured it, it draws 17 amps. So it needs its own 20 amp circuit, or at least it needs to be on a 20 amp circuit with a 20 amp receptacle. But this is a dedicated receptacle on a dedicated circuit. This is the only receptacle on the 20 amp circuit. And it's dedicated and reserved specifically for a microwave or an air fryer. So we can plug our microwave in here or air fryer, but they draw so much current that if there's something else on that circuit, and there is, there's a toaster and a coffee maker on that circuit. They can't be run at the same time or, or you'll overload the circuit. That's why I went ahead and installed dedicated 20 amp. I put one in for the microwave and one in for the air fryer that we don't even have yet, but I'm planning ahead. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.